Welcome to Pan. This is Courtney. I would love to talk to you today about quartz. Now, I know it's a pretty common mineral, but there's a reason that we all use it. It is the workhorse of the mineralogical community. Um, you see it in complement to most other minerals. It makes up a huge percentage of the crust of the Earth, the planet that we are currently inhabiting. Um, you're probably exposed to it all the time. We use it in a lot of our products as humans. We have glass, silica. We use it a lot. Um, in its crystallographic form, it comes in these beautiful prismatic um, pyramidal type structures. Like, yes. Can you see that? Very pretty, very pretty. These are used to amplify energy. That's what we primarily use it for. Um, this is clear quartz. There are several other varieties and we do use them in different ways. Um, they have some of the similar properties, but especially like we've talked about before with color correspondences, um, that can kind of influence what you're doing with it as well. I love clear quartz because you can use it in almost any capacity. You can either use it in and of itself in a spell or, you know, if you're doing like a protection. Um, I actually have several big crystals at a lot of the entryways into my home. I like to charge them. I'll talk a little bit about that <laughs> later, but I like to keep them charged at entry points. That way the crystal can just kind of do some of the work for me. It can cleanse some of the energy that's coming in and out of your home. It can act as a kind of a barrier, almost a psychic shield. Um, it's really good to already have your own psychic shield kind of up, but I am the world's worst about being really empathetic and letting that down. Um, I don't guard myself as well as I should, but quartz is usually there and it's got my back. Um, it acts as like a repellent, just like a little bit of a force field. It's very powerful. Um, you actually see it in a lot of technology now. I don't know if you've heard like quartz nanotech and things like that. Um, in the same way that it relays energy, it has properties that allow it to absorb energy as well. So sometimes that can be positive energy. If you're needing to use it for a certain purpose, you can charge it. Um, we can talk about that a little bit more later, but typically sitting it out under a full moon, if you need some of that solar firepower, quartz is, is safe to sit outside. Um, in certain regards, you wouldn't want to heat it too much because that could influence it and turn it into more of a citrine which if you were going for solar energy that might be a good thing but it depends on what you want to use the crystal for um in and of itself it's a pretty stable crystal uh, you don't have to worry about any issues if you were doing cleansing with water charging with water like some other stones that might be soluble um, this one would be totally fine with that now it can also absorb negative energies which is extremely useful as well. Um, I like to use it in situations like that if I say I'm doing a ritual that I feel may leave me a little bit vulnerable at the time. You know, always if you're comfortable working with different guides or guardians, you know, call upon them, call upon whatever group, pantheon, energies, that you currently are working with or comfortable with. Um, it call upon them for per protection as always, but if you want a little bit of a psychic shield, I definitely like to set some quartz crystals around the perimeter. Um, just so that I feel a little bit more comfortable being vulnerable and raising the kind of energy that I need for the things that I may be working with. Um, that's totally up to you, it's just an option. Um, it is good if you are working with crystals 
you know, aside from courts that have their own properties, their own things that you may be doing, um, it can act as an amplifier. That's why you see it a lot in crystal grids as well. If you were trying to raise energy for a specific purpose and direct it in a certain way, uh, they're really good for that. Uh, that's also a lot of times when you see the prismatic forms, the ones that are, or if you see them sold as crystal wands, they may not be the traditional kind of wand that you would be picturing, but like a long kind of columnar, maybe have some points on the ends. And that is really good for directing energy. Um, if I was using it strictly to absorb or repel, I might just use more of a granular form. Um, let's see, yes. This is a clear granular form. I actually found this one myself. I like to do some hiking. It's very heavy. Quartz is it's pretty heavy. Um, so you could use it for that sort of thing. Um, also, if you like to do chakra clearing, energy work, if you're working with cleansing your aura, quartz would be a good one. Also, another good chance to use it for its cleansing and magnifying properties. You can use it to kind of help you with your energies to remove some of the stagnation. You can also help it to charge some of the things that you may be wanting more of. Um, if you need to reactivate a chakra that you feel has been a little bit dulled, you know, remove that blockage and fire it up. Um, <laughs> overly simplified, I know. Uh, we can get into that later. <laughs> so, um, just another thing, and just waxing poetic about quartz here for a minute. I do love it, because I feel like it's such a good metaphor for us ourselves as we're going through this process, um, the things that we need to learn in this incarnation that we're here, that we're existing in. Quartz exists in all three of the metamorphic, um, sedimentary, and transformational stages of the rock cycle. Now, that might not mean a ton to you, but I will say it means a lot to me, and I think that that's very interesting that it's able and it is stable to exist in these different capacities. So what I mean by that is in the, um, just say, to begin with, it's kind of a chicken versus the egg sort of, a <laughs> sort of a debate, but um, because it is cyclical and just like things with the wheel of the year and the type of path that we all like to follow, things are cyclical and that is a beautiful thing. Um, but how I view it would be igneous. Igneous. It's a very silly word, but igneous. That is the fire, the, um, the magma, the volcanoes, that kind of energy. You get that, that's where quartz is first, you know, it, where it first originates. So you get that, and you get the pure form. That's where you get those beautiful crystallographic, um, just giant pieces and the beautiful, clear, the ones that really resonate with you, that you're drawn to. Um, that's where those originate. So then you also have the sedimentary. So it's where it's deposited. If you, you know, how a mountain wears down, all of the forces, they're connected. Um, you have the wind and the water, and it erodes this beautiful mountain, the earth, that stability that we have. It's constant, but it's constantly changing as well. So, that gets eroded down. Um, it gets in these little pieces. You like to go to the beach. Most of the time, that's quartz. You get silica. All those tiny little, little sand grains, that's quartz. I, I would actually like to get into detail about how, why I think that may be one of the reasons that we love the ocean so much. Um, going to the beach, it's one of those liminal spaces. You have all of that beautiful, you know, the salt water, you have that fresh air, you're surrounded by beautiful beaches of quartz in this part of the world. A lot of them, a lot of them are, but especially in this part of the world. Um, and you get that energy, it really just reverberates, and I think it's a very cleansing experience. You kind of feel like you reset, 
kind of put some priorities in order. Um, so you get that. That would be the sedimentary aspect. And then you see sandstone. Um, it's pretty common. You like sandstone, arcosic sandstone, um, things that are broken down and they're re-cemented in and of themselves. But you can still use those, especially in that granular form. I feel like, for me, it, it almost seems like having that amplified surface area just helps with absorption. Like, it's really good if you're using it like a psychic cleaning agent. You know, it just really helps absorb any kind of negative activity, energy that's going on around you. Now, the um, third part of the cycle is the uh, transformational, like the metamorphic. Um, that's something that I think that's probably the biggest one that relates to us, in my opinion, is the transformational. That's something that we could all learn from. It is the pressure and the heat. You get that. The pushing, the pulling, the pressure, the depth, and it's transformed. It's transformed into something beautiful. Um, so you go down into the depths of the earth, like say if you've got the... If you have a plate, if you've got the plate of the Earth's crust, like the San Andreas Fault, that one's going side to side, it's slipping, Cal California's just slipping, but some of the other ones, it's abducting, or subducting. You get that, and you get that pressure, and, and what was once exposed and on the surface of the Earth is now being reabsorbed by our planet. And that pressure and the heat as it comes down and it's just changing and it's liquefying and it's making it more ductile and flexible. Um, and you get totally new, like the chemical arrangement is still the same. But you get totally new crystals from that, new rocks. Um, you have new energetic influences. I just, I just think that's really cool. <laughs> I get jazzed. I'm sorry. That might have been boring. But... I'm just saying, it, quartz exists in all forms, it's extremely common, but incredibly useful. I never for a second think that that makes it pedestrian or mundane. It is wonderful, it's um, easily accessible, even if you don't financially have the resources to be going out and buying pretty rocks, which I, we've all been there, and most of us may still be there. <laughs> but you can go out and you can find it for yourself. Um, a little quick tip, if you want to test it, um, if you have a piece of plate glass that you're not using, quartz will actually scratch it. It's, it's a little bit tougher, so it's a good way to tell if it is quartz. Um, and also just try to see if it resonates with you. Um, but anyways, I hope you enjoyed that. I'll talk to you about more crystals later if you're interested. I would love to hear any suggestions that you have, if there's anything that you would like me to talk about. Thanks.